Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is my distinct pleasure to welcome you to the Naval Station Norfolk and to the commissioning ceremony of USS John Warner. I am Commander Doug Drees, the ship's executive officer. On behalf of the crew, I would like to extend our sincere thanks for joining us here today. Before our ceremony begins, I would ask you to please take a moment to silence your cell phones for the duration of the ceremony. Additionally, there is a tent located down the pier uh, for any personnel that are having heat-related issues. Thank you. We are here today to celebrate the commissioning of USS John Warner. The ship is named for a man with a history of service to the nation, the Commonwealth of Virginia, and to the Navy and Marine Corps team. Senator John Warner began this long relationship by serving as a sailor in the Navy in World War II. At the end of the war, he attended Washington and Lee University and then attended the University of, Law, University of Virginia Law School. At the outbreak of the Korean War, he interrupted his education to serve his country again, this time as a commissioned officer in the United States Marine Corps. At the conclusion of the Korean War, he returned home and received his law degree from Georgetown University. He served as Under Secretary of the Navy, and in 1972, he became Secretary of the Navy. He represented the Commonwealth of Virginia as a United States Senator for 30 years, serving as the Chairman or Ranking Member of the Armed Services Committee for his last 10 years in office. In 2009, Queen Elizabeth awarded him the title of Knight Commander of the Most Excellent Order of the British Empire for his work in strengthening the American-British Alliance. The warship before you today is the 12th submarine of the Virginia class. With its sister ships, it represents a revolution in submarine design, construction, and mission capability. Brimming with leading edge technology and advanced engineering, this vessel brings versatility and firepower to the fleet. John Warner and the Virginia class are among the most effective platforms in the United States Navy. And this warship takes another step forward in advancing the superiority of our submarine force. Able to operate in the far corners of the world's oceans, undetected, while connected to air, sea, and land-based forces and key shore facilities, these submarines are equipped to wage multidimensional warfare around the globe. John Warner's adaptability makes it highly responsive to changing mission requirements and provides the nation with the capabilities required to be the decisive factor in any conflict. In addition to anti-submarine, anti-surface ship, and countermine warfare, John Warner will support surveillance, spe special operations, and covert strike missions. Thank you for allowing each of us the privilege to serve our nation as a part of your Navy while proudly bearing the name John Warner. Construction began on the submarine you see behind me in 2009, and it was christened on September 6, 2014 at Newport News Shipbuilding. Today she is complete and battle ready. We are all very proud to serve on the newest fast attack submarine in the United States Navy. Today's ceremony is a time-honored tradition that began with the commissioning of the Navy's first ship, a captured British schooner, the Margareta, in 1775. Since then, thousands of ships have undergone the transition from silent hull to fully alive warship. My shipmates, our commissioning crew, here afternoon as plank owners, are in formation and ready.
Ship's Company, attend hut. Will the guests please rise and remain standing for honors, presentation of colors, our national anthem, and the invocation. Ladies and gentlemen, our platform guests. Commander Gregory Cathcart, Chaplain Corps, United States Navy, our ceremony chaplain. Captain Douglas Lemon, United States Navy, Supervisor of Shipbuilding, Newport News. Captain Paul Snodgrass, United States Navy, Commander, Submarine Squadron 6. Rear Admiral Charles Beards, United States Navy, retired, the Commissioning Committee Chairman. Mr. Jeffrey Geiger, President, General Dynamics Electric Boat. Mr. Matthew Mulherron, Corporate Vice President, Huntington Ingalls Industries and President, Newport News Shipbuilding. Rear Admiral David Johnson, United States Navy, Program Executive Officer, Submarines. The Honorable Paul Frame, Mayor, City of Norfolk. Vice Admiral Michael Connor, United States Navy, Commander, Submarine Forces. The Honorable Sean Stackley, Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Research, Development, and Acquisition. Admiral John Richardson, United States Navy, Director, Naval Nuclear Propulsion Program, and Admiral Carlisle Trost, United States Navy retired, former Chief of Naval Operations. Admiral Jonathan Greener, United States Navy, Chief of Naval Operations. The Honorable Scott Rigel, United States Representative, Second District, Commonwealth of Virginia. The Honorable J. Randy Forbes, United States Representative, Fourth District, Commonwealth of Virginia. The Honorable Bobby Scott, United States Representative, 3rd District, Commonwealth of Virginia. The Honorable Mark Warner, United States Senator, Commonwealth of Virginia. Ladies and gentlemen, our ship sponsor, Mrs. Jeannie Warner, and the Honorable John Warner, World War II veteran, former Senator for the Commonwealth of Virginia, former Secretary of the Navy and our ship's namesake, escorted by Senior Chief Oscar Venesey, Chief of the Boat. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Terry McAuliffe, Governor, Commonwealth of Virginia, Escorted today by Commander Dan Caldwell, John Warner's prospective commanding officer. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, honors to the Honorable Terry McAuliffe, Governor, Commonwealth of Virginia. Platform, hand salute. <laughs>
platform, ready, two. Advance the colors. We would like to thank the United States Fleet Forces Band and the Naval Station Norfolk Color Guard and Saluting Battery for their participation in our ceremony today. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, Chaplain Cathcart will deliver the invocation. Let us pray. Almighty God, we come before you on this very special occasion from different backgrounds, cultures, and expressions of faith toward you, but all who love freedom and have devoted our lives in pursuit of it. This morning on this very special occasion, we have the privilege and the honor to celebrate a new beginning in the history of the finest fighting force of undersea warriors the world has ever known. And we do so in the presence of those who have devoted the days of their lives in protecting our nation and the nations of this world from those who would wish us harm. On this very special occasion, we have joined as one family to ask for your blessing upon the commissioning of this great warship and those attributes that have been lived and demonstrated daily in the life of her namesake, that which we each aspire to, honor, courage, integrity, and commitment to service. And that each of those qualities remain a legacy in the lives of all who walk upon these decks. And finally, we as a warrior brotherhood, whether across the globe or under the seas or in harm's way, collectively ask for your care and protection upon this great warship, the great American whom it's named after, and upon every undersea warrior that sails within these walls. And for those the world over that it will protect, and in so doing, deliver this great nation and those in it from the perils of this world. As we echo the words, Legate a defendum libertatum. We proclaim boldly, we are ambassadors in defending freedom. In your holy name we pray. Amen.
Thank you, Chaplain Cathcart. Will the guests please be seated? Ship's company, parade, rest. Ladies and gentlemen, the, the Honorable Terry McAuliffe, Governor, Commonwealth of Virginia. Good morning, everybody. I'm here to welcome you to the great Commonwealth of Virginia, to all of our Virginians, welcome. And to those of you not from Virginia, <laughs> well, welcome to the greatest state in the United States of America, the Commonwealth of Virginia. <clears throat> and welcome also to the greatest sh shipyard in the globe. If you look here today, we have the greatest workers, over 800 ships since their existence. You think about the number of subs that have been built. Today will be number 62. Over 31 aircraft carriers. And to think, right here is the only place in the globe that we make and refuel our aircraft carriers. This is a very special place. I want to thank the 23,000 employees who work in this shipyard. And I specifically want to thank the 4,000 men and women who worked on building the USS John Warner, and I want to thank you for completing it two and a half months ahead of schedule. <clears throat> so to our Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Greener, and our next CNO, Admiral Richardson, let me make myself clear. I think those are nice little states up in Maine and Rhode Island and Connecticut in Mississippi. But if you want to continue to have a strong Navy and the greatest military in the world, every naval vessel should be built here in the Commonwealth of Virginia. <laughs> it's only fitting that this ship be named for Senator John Warner. John Warner was a statesman and a warrior. And I can tell you this, we miss folks like John Warner in the United States Senate, 30 years of service. John Warner did not come into the job as a Republican or a Democrat or as an independent. He went to work every single day trying to figure out how he helps his constituents, how he helps his state, and how he helps our country. And that's what we need more of in Washington, which is a gridlock on reckless defense cuts or highway funding. We need more John Warners. Now, we got him in our congressional delegation today, but honestly, Senator Warner, on behalf of all of us in Virginia, thank you for what you have done for the Commonwealth of Virginia, and most importantly, thank you for what you have done for the United States of America. Thank you very much. Thank you, Governor McAuliffe. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Jeffrey Geiger, President, General Dynamics Electric Boat. <laughs> Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Despite what the governor said, <laughs> it is an honor for me to represent the more than 13,000 men and women of General Dynamics Electric Boat whose contributions helped make this memorable day, memorable day possible. I'd like to begin by recognizing today's distinguished platform guests, and in particular, Mrs. Jeannie Warner, the very gracious sponsor of the submarine John Warner. and the submarine's namesake, one of our nation's most outstanding patriots and public servants, Senator John Warner. This is a proud day for the United States Navy and everyone involved in the submarine enterprise. And I'm sure it will be a day that will always be remembered by Senator and Mrs. Warner. We as shipbuilders are privileged to be part of this event and part of the team that contributes to our Navy's submarine fleet and its mission to protect and defend our great nation. There's no question that this is a very special ship. As the second ship built under the Block 3 contract, USS John Warner is the most recent example of the Navy Industries team's commitment to maintaining the Virginia class program as a model for defense acquisition. Turned over to the Navy two months ahead of schedule and below cost, this submarine also received the highest quality grade of any Virginia class ship at delivery. That is an achievement for all to be proud of. 
This shipbuilding team continues to maintain its promise to deliver each successive ship of the class with meaningful improvements in quality, cost, and schedule. The submarine John Warner is tangible evidence of this promise. Lastly, and most importantly, I want to recognize Commander Dan Caldwell and his exceptional crew who have brought life to this ship. Their dedication to duty and commitment to excellence is widely recognized and deeply appreciated. I know I speak for everyone here when I expend my, extend my best wishes to Commander Caldwell and the entire ship's company for a safe and distinguished tour of duty. May USS John Warner serve you, our nation, and our Navy long and well. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Geiger. Ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Matthew Mulherin, Corporate Vice President, Huntington Ingalls Industries, and President, Newport News Shipbuilding. Thank you, XO, and good morning, everyone. Distinguished platform guests, ladies and gentlemen, Senator and Mrs. Warner, I am honored to be here today representing the thousands of shipbuilders of Newport News Shipbuilding. Since our founding in 1886, our shipbuilders have constructed more than 800 vessels, beginning with Dorothy, an iron tugboat that started our journey into shipbuilding. A journey that today finds us building the most sophisticated, most lethal, and most awesome nuclear-powered ships on the planet, ships like USS John Warner. I can tell you firsthand that our shipbuilders take great pride in each and every ship we build for the U.S. Navy. But there are some ships, though, with special significance. This submarine is one of them because of the man for which it is named. For more than 45 years, Senator John Warner has devoted his life to service and preserving freedom. During his 30 years in Congress, he always demonstrated strong, strong support for our shipyard and for our shipbuilders. In fact, he championed the legislation that enabled the teaming agreement between Newport News and Electric Boat to build these boats together. For that, our shipbuilders will be forever grateful, and this submarine will forever hold a place of honor. Even in his retirement, the senator continues to impact our yard. His latest contribution has also been one of his greatest, and that was introducing us to Jeannie. The ship sponsor is said to impart her spirit into the ship and we are extremely fortunate to have Jeannie Warner as the sponsor of this submarine. Jeannie, we know that your unwavering spirit will be with this boat and her crew always, and your strength and resilience will help them endure. Today's commissioning ceremony begins a new chapter in the life of this submarine. Yet as we look to our future, I believe it's also quite appropriate to recognize the work that led us here today. This submarine is the culmination of many years of hard work and dedication by a team committed to continuous improvement, boat after boat. A team that delivered this submarine two and a half months of ahead of schedule and under budget. A team comprised of shipbuilders from Newport News and Electric Boat, our Navy partners, and our suppliers from across all 50 states. There is no greater example of American manufacturing, American innovation, and American pride. In closing, I would like to congratulate Commander Caldwell and his crew on today's commissioning. It has been an honor working with you to bring USS John Warner to life. We wish you continued success, and we thank you for your service to our country. We know that under your watch, SSN 785 will serve our nation and defend our freedom as her namesake has done throughout his life. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mulherin. 
Ladies and gentlemen, Vice Admiral Michael Connor, Commander, Submarine Forces. Thank you, Doug. It's an honor to be here today as we bring USS John Warner into the commissioned fleet. I'd really like to thank everyone who made this day possible, but some in particular. The Navy League, Hampton Roads Chapter, led by Mary Ellen Baldwin, and the Commissioning Committee, led by Rear Admiral Chuck Beers, deserve special praise. It's not easy to put on an event that is simultaneously worthy of this ship's distinguished namesake, the ship's incredible capability, while at the same time honoring the Senator's penchant for modesty in all things. However, you both succeeded brilliantly. I want to thank the shipbuilders, Electric Boat and Huntington Ingalls, for delivering under budget and early. Under budget is important because we must set the example for responsible stewardship of taxpayer dollars. Well-run programs like the Virginia-class submarines allow the Department of Defense to hold the line on spending. We are glad that you are early because it's getting busy out there. In my tenure as submarine force commander, the demand for important missions that only submarines can do has grown dramatically, resulting in extended deployments for some, back-to-back de back back deployments for others, and completely unscheduled deployments for others. For Commander Dan Caldwell and your magnificent crew, get ready to get busy. I know what you're thinking, we've been busy for a while. Well, until now, this is going to be a different kind of busy in the future. Until now, you've operated with a deep bench of operational and technical support at your fingertips. Going forward, you will operate far from home with more independence than any other segment of our armed forces. And your brothers and sisters throughout the U.S. military will depend on you to succeed. This crew should also keep in mind your ship's namesake. A man of many accomplishments speaks to me most fondly of his service as a third class petty officer in the United States Navy. You are at a formative stage as a crew, kind of like being a third class petty officer. And if you approach your important duties and each and every one of you has important duties, with the same commitment as your namesake, there is no doubt that the USS John Warner will enjoy a lifetime of future accomplishments that parallels the future trajectory of Petty Officer Third Class John Warner. Thank you. Thank you, Admiral Connor. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Sean Stackley, Assistant Secretary of the Navy for Research, Development, and Acquisition. Governor McAuliffe, CNO, Admiral Richardson, Honorable Members of U.S. Congress, your strong voice in our nation's capital has made ours a stronger Navy. When you return to Washington, take pride in knowing as we pause from the toil of building ships that your Navy is underway, safely, reliably, certainly, operating on every ocean, every sea, going wherever the waters may reach, doing whatever our nation bids. And so, when you return to Washington, be sure to deliver this simple message to your colleagues. We need more ships. So many distinguished guests, all here in tribute to Virginia's favorite son and his lovely bride, Senator John Warner and Mrs. Jeannie Warner. You have heard told that those whom we choose to honor says a great deal about who we are. It says a great deal about what 
we value. So today, as we look upon this great ship, as we marvel at the technology and the daunting numbers that measure her, as we consider that only America, only America, could build a submarine such as this, today, we honor the skilled mechanics and craftsmen, the naval supervisors and engineers who, by their design, have made her fast and quiet, and by their hands have given her strength and power. To the men and women of Newport News and Electric Boat and the program team who call yourselves Virginia, you have built well. Take pride in knowing that the submarines built by your hands will serve our nation, will serve our children and our children's children long after your work here is done. So work on, Virginia. Work on and work hard. And today, today we honor the officers and crew, truly the heroes who stand in ranks before us, who come from every corner of this country, from all walks of life, well-educated, well-trained, and today, well-armed, who, when they sail from your warm embrace, graced by their sponsor's blessing, will sail with impunity beneath every sea, and, if called, will sail in harm's way so that we here in America may continue to enjoy those freedoms we cherish most deeply. To say that they are the best at what they do does not do them justice, for among all the world's navies, none other can do what they do. And today, as we consider the service that this submarine will provide, in protecting our security and that of our friends and allies. Today, today we honor the man whose name she bears. In telling the story of the extraordinary career of service and achievement of Petty Officer Third Class, Captain, United States Marine Corps, Secretary, Commissioner, Senator, Chairman, Statesman, John Warner. Today's distinguished speakers tell the story of our nation from that second great war of the last century to Korea, to Vietnam, throughout the Cold War, to Iraq and Afghanistan. Seven decades. And today, Senator, returning to your beloved Navy to witness the commissioning of a ship that in carrying your name to sea through the middle of this century, or more than a hundred years after the young John Warner first answered the call, you are forging a link, a strong link to the generations of sailors who yearn to follow in your footsteps. Today, ladies and gentlemen, this is whom we honor. This is who we are. This is what we value. Senator, as chairman of the Armed Services Committee, questions of war and peace, matters of national security, and two, of national honor, the cares of our men and women in uniform, these, the most pressing issues of our time, came to your desk, two on your desk. You kept close words left to us by that poet Longfellow, words that traced to your Navy heritage, words that gave you courage and two solace, words that on this day, on this occasion, I humbly pass on in your honor to the officers and crew who proudly call themselves the John Warner.
that they too may gain courage and solace. Thou too sail on, O ship of state. Sail on, O union, strong and great. Humanity, with all its fears, with all the hopes of future years, is hanging breathless on thy fate. So sail on, nor fear to breast the sea. Our fears, our hopes, are all with thee. Our hearts, our hopes, our prayers, our tears, our faith triumphant o'er our fears are all with thee, are all with thee. God speed, John Warner. God bless the officers and crew who will give her strength. God bless her sponsor who will give her grace. And God bless her country whom she will protect. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary Sackley. Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral John Richardson, Director, Naval Nuclear Propulsion Program. Well, thank you, XO. And I'd like to add my greetings to Governor McAuliffe, all of the distinguished people on the platform, and most especially to everybody who's come together as part of our Navy family, and of course, to the crew of the John Warner. I would say that if you're a sailor, a Virginian, in fact, if you're an American, this is the place to be today, here on this pier in Norfolk. To so many people, this day is a dream come true. It struck me as I was thinking about today that there are currently only two submarines named for people in the Virginia class, the Admiral Hyman G. Rickover, yet to be built, and John Warner, who we welcome to the fleet today. And how appropriate it is that these two are the ones. Because there are probably no two more influential people in history that brought us to this point today, the commissioning of a nuclear-powered attack submarine. Senator Warner, I've said it before, uh, but I must say it again today. Without your leadership in Congress and as the Secretary of the Navy, we simply would not be here celebrating today. You and Admiral Rickover together were visionaries and an amazing leadership team who garnered the support needed to propel us forward to this day. You enabled this achievement by bringing together suppliers throughout the country and our shipbuilders, both in New England and Virginia, teaming together to build this incredible ship. It is a dream come true. I know it's also a dream come true for all residents of the Commonwealth of Virginia to be here in Virginia welcoming a submarine named for Senator John Warner. Governor McAuliffe, thank you so much for joining us here today and for all that you are doing to support the Navy, our sailors, and their families here in Virginia. We are very grateful. And I'm also grateful that so many of Virginia's elected leaders have joined the governor today. It's a strong signal to our Navy that Virginia's support for our Navy and their families is second to none. Our allies and partners have been waiting for this day, another warship to prowl the deep, providing assurance that for decades, John Warner will be there when needed to support and defend them. And every sailor in the Navy, but most especially those on Warner, you have been eagerly, eagerly preparing for this day and are ready, full of spirit and vitality, to bring this ship to life and take her to sea on her first mission. And we are so blessed to have, as the ship sponsor, Miss Jeannie Warner, we could ask for no more graceful sponsor to breathe life and spirit into this ship. So no doubt about it, this is a dream come true. But I know not everybody is celebrating today. In fact, I'm sure many spent a sleepless night last night. Those who would threaten our way of life, those who would challenge our access to international markets and the sea lanes that connect them to us, those who have no respect for borders or the rule of law or basic human rights, to those people who threaten us knowing that John Warner is in the fleet 
and that her crew wakes up every day thinking of new ways to defeat them, this day is a realization of their worst fears. So I, I bring you USS John Warner, a nightmare to our enemies, a comfort to our allies, an inspiration to all Virginians, and a dream come true for all Americans. Captain Caldwell and crew, it's now over to you. I know you will make us proud. Welcome to the fleet, and may God bless you, and God bless America. Thank you. Thank you, Admiral Richardson. Ladies and gentlemen, the Honorable Mark Warner, United States Senator, Commonwealth of Virginia. Thank you, Admiral Richardson, and uh, congratulations on your pending confirmation as the next CNO. Congratulations. <clears throat> I want to... I want to join the governor and others in thanking the world's greatest shipbuilders, those in Newport News, and yes, their colleagues in Electric Boat as well. <laughs> I am so proud that Virginia has such strong ties to our military, and that Hampton Roads, in particular, has such strong ties to our Navy. And I'm proud that we got, gather here today to honor a great Virginia statesman and friend, John Warner, and his wonderful wife, Jeannie. It is, it is also great to have the boat's crew here they have already tested her out, and I'm sure they're looking forward to making her operational. Let's give a round of applause to the crew. This incredible boat is a testament to all of you and to your commitment to ensuring that America maintains the strongest military force in the world. I absolutely believe it is appropriate that this Virginia-class submarine, made in large part by Virginians, in Virginia, and home ported in Virginia, is named for a consummate Virginia gentleman, longtime Virginia senator, someone who has done so much for the Commonwealth and our country over his career. And this boat, bearing his name, guarantees that John Warner will continue to serve our military, our commonwealth, and our country for decades more. It's truly appropriate. It's been mentioned only two individuals named for submarines. One, John Warner. During his 30-year career in the Senate, John forged, as the governor mentioned, a tradition of bipartisanship. When it came to doing what was best interest of the United States, he set aside constantly party labels and got down to solving problems. I can say from experience, running against him for the Senate in 1996, <laughs> a race in which I got the silver medal that's the polite way of saying I lost, that he is a formidable but fair foe. Political fights and campaigns are always contentious, but we remain courteous to each other. And I can honestly say that Virginians chose the right Warner that day. <laughs> Even after we battled on the campaign trail, we forged, forged a bond of friendship. And for years as governor, and now as Senator, we've worked together in the best traditions of our Commonwealth. Over the years, this friendship has developed into a role where I'm proud to call him my mentor. And it is with great honor that I serve in his seat in the United States Senate. In fact, the entire Virginia delegation, many of who are here, including Rob Whitman, who didn't get a shout out earlier, but who was here with us as well, one of the things that John installed in all of us who serve in the congressional delegation is that when it comes down particularly to items regarding our military, we set aside party labels 
and work together to make sure that we maintain this long tradition. We've fought hard to make sure that the Navy maintains an 11 carrier fleet. We fight hard, Sean, to make sure that we provide adequate funding and avoid the stupidity of sequestration. It's that tradition that John Warner installed in all of us. So John, I'm honored to call you a friend, a mentor, a role model, and quite honestly, in politics, where we all overstate things, somebody that's not overstated as the real deal, a statesman. Congratulations to you and this great boat that is named in your honor. Thank you all so much. Thank you, Senator Warner. Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral Carlisle Trost, former Chief of Naval Operations. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, and especially the fine crew of the USS John Warner. I want you to know there was a time when you had to be physically fit to serve in the Navy. I want you also to know there was a time when I was. <laughs> I wouldn't miss this day for any gift in the world. John Warner is a longtime friend, a respected colleague, a man who's done so much for this country that he deserves every honor that's ever come this way. I was sitting here listening to the accolades that my friend, the good senator, was getting, and I thought every bit of it is well-deserved, well-earned. He was a great guy to work with, a great colleague, a great boss, a dedicated American. What you've heard from the speakers who've been up here was this is a man who, starting as a teenager, was serving his country, first in the Navy, later in the Marine Corps, then in the Navy as the Undersecretary, and this is secretary, and finally, as a senator from the great state of Virginia, about which I've heard more accolades since I live in Maryland than I have about anybody recently. I want to say just a few words about John Warner, and they're really directed to the crew. John Warner is a servant of his country. John Warner served us well as an enlisted man in the Navy, as an officer in the Marine Corps, as the leader of the Navy, as both the Undersecretary and the Secretary, and certainly as a Senator from the state of Virginia. No accolade could mean more to me as a retired Naval officer than his being named the, or having the ship named after him. And to the crew, I'll leave you with this. Here's a guy who all his adult life served his country, served it well, is remembered now through your ship by its name and will be remembered by your performance as the crew of the USS John Warner. Wear the name proudly, serve proudly, and continue to serve in the manner for which he set the stage. Thanks for listening. Hope I haven't been too long. I'll get back to my seat eventually. Thank you, Admiral Trost. Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral Jonathan Greener, Chief of Naval Operations. Here and distinguished visitors, all, 
I could say a lot about each of you, but I can, in my own mind, look at the fans waving and say, I'll have to say just thank you to all of you. And my speech today literally is just two words, and that's thank you. But a word about Carl Trucks. <laughs> he was my naval aide when I was Secretary of the Navy. I also had Tom Hayward, another Chief of Naval Operations, as a naval aide, and a distinguished line of Marines. But Carl was number one in his class at a Annapolis. Carl, I was not number one or anywhere near number one in my class, but you reminded me that frequently. <laughs> but on a serious note, I chose Carl to ask him to come today to introduce me because he represents one very important fundamental principle in our nation. When the Founding Fathers put us together, they determined that the civilians will control the armed forces of the United States. And those of us who are privileged to get the appointments, always by a president, to serve. And when we arrive at the Pentagon or wherever we go, Pentagon, obviously, we're fortunate to have professionals like Carl Trost from day one beside us to exercise that control over the military and where they go and what they do in harm's way in a professionally guided manner. He symbolizes the long line of officers, not only of the Navy and the Marine Corps, but all of our services that come to the forefront to help those civilians control the greatest collective armed force in the world. Thank you, Carl, very much. Now, my task today was, number one, to talk a little bit about Admiral Greenan. I'm privileged to introduce him, but the chief of the boat in my house, the distinguished sponsor, right here, my beloved wife, said, get up there, be brief, and sit down. No, I will do that momentarily, dear, but I do have a few notes. I'm grateful from the bottom of my heart, and my wife also, to all those who made this possible. It started when I retired from the Senate after five consecutive terms and the support of many of you here today. And I returned to life of a civilian, so to speak, very quietly and without any assumptions that ever again would I be called upon, certainly not to be present at a function like this today honoring me. So I first say thank you, America, for the opportunities you've given me for this public service. I thank the military for which I had responsibilities and I still today as a citizen try to fulfill those responsibilities. I thank the congressional delegation. The congressional delegation actually originated the idea that they wanted something named for me. And it came slowly through the system. And I, frankly, folks, did not know anything about it. I sought no recognition. But there sits Gordon England, former Secretary of the Navy. He knows those secrets. He knows how it got up to Bob Gates, and then to President George W. Bush, and then to President Herbert, George Herbert Walker Bush. And I'm grateful to those two presidents because I was privileged to serve with them in many ways throughout their presidencies. And collectively, that chain decided from the Virginia delegations to the president to name this ship for me, for which I thank you and thank America. I want to talk also about several others who are here today. We have a number of former distinguished governors. I see Governor Bob, 
come to Blyles, and they're not paying attention to me is Governor Houghton. <laughs> now, Governor Houghton was in the Navy in World War II as a submariner. I think you're probably the only World War II submariner in this country. My predecessors on this platform have paid great tribute to the crew. I also do. And the yard workers that with their hands, their skill, and their dedication, and the support of the families of not only the crew, but the yard workers for the long hours, they created this magnificent instrument that sails forth in the cause of maintaining peace and freedom. So I uh, hats off to you. Now speaking of hats, I wore my hat, John W. Warner, yesterday as I visited the submarine. Today I wear this. It's a hat, for those who can't see it, Hyman G. Rickover. I spent five years, four months, and three days in the Navy Secretariat and many, many hours throughout that opportunity working with Hyman Rickover. And I want to acknowledge the father of the nuclear Navy. President Jimmy Carter had a submarine named for him. And at a function similar to this in the course of the development of his ship, he spoke. And he asked of the crowd, he said, how many here have in any way in their lives been affected by Admiral Rickover? And dutifully, some sailors and people that had worked raised their hands. Then he said in his soft, quiet, and dignified way, may I say to those who didn't raise their hands, you're mistaken. Admiral Rickover's wisdom, his foresight, his energy, his determination to have ships of the United States Navy powered by nuclear force. He is the one that brought it to life. And he said, everyone in this audience, their freedom that they enjoy today is owing to, in many ways, the leg of that triad, which is the nuclear United States Navy. And this ship proudly joins its predecessors which have literally maintained in many ways that peace. I remember when I had the watch, the first thing in the morning in the intelligence briefing, we were briefed on where the Soviet Union Yankee boats were right off the coast of Virginia. I'm talking about just several hundred miles and where our ships and ASW were positioned to react if the was necessary to do so. I remember that. And I say to this crew today, we used to, and in my speeches I would say, the Russian bear has learned to swim. And they did have a fleet in numbers that began to equal ours, but not in terms of technical superiority what we had. So to the crew of this ship, as you move from these docks and the safety of this harbor, with the spirit of this country, with full confidence in you, remember, today in history, the Russian bear is back swimming again. Let them know of your presence, your determination to defend freedom to defend the sea lanes of the world, which are the very arteries of international commerce, manned by our submarines and our surface ships and naval aircraft, carefully working to have those sea lanes open, not just for us, but for all. And we were 
We urge other nations. I was grilled right here by the press here yesterday. Well, what do you think about this and what do you think about that and that problem in Iraq and that problem in Afghanistan? I said, America stands tall, but we must call upon our allies to build their navies, to build their armed forces, to stand tall with us because the world cannot say, oh, leave it to America. Let them do it by themselves. So we can only turn back this tide of terrorism united with other countries all over the world. I thank you. I will put this cap back on. I will proceed now to my responsibilities. And I really had a little bit of a shocker here when my dear friend Sean Stackley got up and began to read a poem. I said, oh, he's going to steal the act from me. <laughs> I read from this poem when my beloved wife christened this ship with the bottle. And I'm going to ask you to listen just to a one stanza of this poem, and I'll tell you why. John Macefield was the English poet laureate, born in 1878 and lived for a very long time, and wrote this poem entitled Sea Fever. I must go down to the sea again, to the lonely sea in the sky, and a gray mist on the sea face, and a gray dawn breaking. I must go down to the seas again for the call of the running tide. And all I ask is a windy day with the white clouds flying. I must go down to the sea again. And all I ask is a tall ship and a star to guide her by. Ladies and gentlemen, Admiral Greener is the star that has guided our fleet for these four years. Admiral, sir. I would leave the, you on the deck. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, I've had this job for four years, just about exactly, and this is the third time this has happened. I brought my speechwriter in and I said, okay, look, here's the deal. I need something really tight put together. I really admire Senator John Warner. I need a speech. Uh, it has to say the right things. Gave him a couple things. And he said, well, who's before you? And I said, Senator Warner. And he walked out. <laughs> and let me tell you, it's been like that. It's been like that. But that's OK. I learned so much, and I'm sure you all have as well. Thank you very much for that kind introduction, Senator Warner. I appreciate it very much. So I, I, was, I turned to Admiral Trost, and I said, uh, OK. I wonder what the heck I'm going to say. And he said, tell them it's all been said. <laughs> I'm almost there. I'll try to get to the point. I, too, see the fans running. I'd like to speak just a minute about the sponsorship, our ship's sponsor, about Jeannie Warner and what she has agreed to do. She will soon bring the ship to life, and that's a magnificent thing. It's an integral part of the Navy, the ship, and the crew, as she is. But there's so much more to what a sponsor does this isn't the day she showed up, and she didn't show up last night. She has been with this crew for quite some time. She is the human element to the ship. She encourages the ship. She supports them. She forms a positive and an active bond with what really is an anxious crew to pull this all together. She is a crew member. The sponsor is, in fact, a crew member. But you know what? She's the only crew member that doesn't have a projected rotation date. That means. <laughs> She ain't got no relief. That's it. She's it. She is the spirit and the presence that will guide this crew through the service life. And you say, okay, wait a minute. What's the service life? It's 33 years. So the way I see it, Jeannie, you will be relieved in 2048. And, uh, and if I'm not mistaken, you will have served three, time, three years longer than your husband did in the Senate, which we all think is amazing. So congratulations, and thank you for what you have done and what you will do. 
let me please make uh, three points. I'm going to talk just a bit about global access. I'm going to talk about this nuclear enterprise that we've referred to uh, here and there, and simply Navy tenants. This boat is the latest incarnation of American sea power. It's the most high-tech, it is the most lethal warship, pound for pound, that we have in our inventory. It has sensors and weapons that will hold an adversary at risk at long ranges. But I ask you to think of this. This is a strategic asset for this country. This affords us what we've referred to as global access, and it is fundamental to any mission that you ask your military to do. The best capabilities in the world will be ineffective if you can't get where you need to get. Put simply, you can't bring capabilities to bear if you can't get there. And there is wherever you need to get in the world. Frankly, we are challenged in space. We are challenged in cyber. We are challenged in the air. And we are challenged on the surface. We are not currently challenged in the undersea. And this vessel, my job, my relief, the person that relieves me, and everybody out there's job is to assure that we maintain that advantage. We own the undersea domain. We must keep that situation as we go into the future. As Senator Warner said, the Russian bear is back swimming again. I'd call it doggy paddling right now. But this is an institution that was a good swimming athlete at one time. Okay? So we need to sustain that lead. We have the right industrial base. We have the right institution to do it. We need to keep it that way as we look out and into the future. So, how do we do that? Well, you need a good institution underneath it. You need a good nuclear power enterprise. This is the 60th year, 60, of the, of, that we commemorate the nuclear navy. And in January, we commemorated at the, nucle at the Naval Reactors Headquarters the genius of the science and technology of Admiral Rickover, the long partnership through the years we've had with the amazing industrial base. And this is pretty much, yes, the foundation of that industrial base, this region. The skill, the dedication, and the innovation of men and women at that headquarters, designers, engineers, and people that helped get us through. A culture that Senator Warner referred to and others, a culture of integrity, standards, transparency, underlined by accountability, and a longevity of an institution that perpetuates itself through leadership and changes. And leaders like then Secretary of the Navy Warner, Secretary of the Navy England, Secretary Knightsey, whose this ship is named after, made sure that this institution continued. As I said, it's about people. It has perpetuated itself. It's an elite cadre, this nuclear enterprise, despite key leadership changes. And some have written, golly, we may have an out-of-sequence leadership change. Hey, this is a long institution, ladies and gentlemen. It is focused. It is committed. It has exacting standards. There'll be no compromise. And it will continue to hold the bar or raise the bar so that you have a proof of its product that's behind me and in front of you, the John Warner. Our nuclear power base gives us submarines with persistence, with stealth, and with reliability. It gives us range and endurance. And no other nation has that. And we have to assure ourselves that that's the case. This lack of technology expertise and commitment makes the undersea domain for some a barrier for us it is home. It is our strategic opportunity and is what makes us forge ahead. Navy tenants, a few words about that. When I took the watch a while back, I said, I just want my people in the Navy to think of six words. Keep it simple. War fighting is first. You must operate forward and you must be ready. This vessel behind me and in front of me and in front of you, excuse me, is the epitome of war fighting first. I mean, look at it. It's slender. It's black, it's ominous, and it's all about war fighting. There are no add-ons that we put to this vessel to do its missions. If what is inside of that, what, what one would want to put inside of that, is not critical and fits exactly in the war fighting missions this thing, this vessel will do, it doesn't go on. We don't have time. Uh, it won't fit in. This boat is all about operating forward. It's nuclear powered. That's the advantage. It has unlimited access to the world, and it has unlimited persistence, limited only by the human element of it. And then lastly, she's ready. She's ready for war every time these fine young men and women get her underway and go out. When they submerge that vessel, they are ready for war. 
And that's the way it has to be. That's the way the propulsion plant works and the rest of the submarine. There's no preparation needed. So to Captain Caldwell and the crew, she's ready. So are you. Live up to your namesake's legacy. Live up to your proud Navy heritage and tradition. Remember your mission. Keep the nation safe. Deter aggression. And should deterrence fail, you are to win your nation's wars. This boat has great things ahead of her, and I welcome you aboard along with the rest of us. Ladies and gentlemen, God bless you all. God bless this ship, its sponsor, the crew, our Navy, and this great nation of ours. And I thank you very much. Thank you, Admiral Greenert. Admiral, I would be honored if you would now place John Warner in commission. Thank you. On behalf of the Secretary of the Navy and the, for the President of the United States, I hereby place the United States ship John Warner in commission. May God bless and guide this warship and all who shall sail in her. Thank you, Admiral Greenert. Executive Officer, hoist the colors and the commissioning pennant. Aye, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, please rise. I direct your attention to the boat as we hoist the colors and the commissioning pennant. John Warner, attend. Hut. Quartermaster, hoist the colors and the commissioning pennant. Aye, aye, sir. The flag going up on the bow of the ship is called the Navy Jack. The one being hoisted today was a special gift to Senator Warner. It has been signed by the Secretary of the Navy, the Honorable Ray Mabus, by the former Secretary of the Navy, J. William Middendorf II, by the Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral Jonathan Greenert, by, formal chief, by former Chief of Naval Operations, James L. Holloway III, by the current Director of the Naval Nuclear Propulsion Program and nominated to be the next Chief of Naval Operations, Admiral John Richardson, and by the former director of the Naval Nuclear Propulsion Program and chairman of the Historical Foundation, Admiral Bruce DeMars. Captain, the colors and commissioning pennant are flying over USS John Warner. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. I will now read my orders. <clears throat> From Chief of Naval Personnel, to Commander Dan Caldwell, United States Navy. Subject, Bureau of Naval Personnel Order Number 3411 of 6 December 2011. When directed, detach present duty and proceed to pre-commissioning unit John Warner for duties in conjunction with fitting out. Upon commissioning of USS John Warner, report for duty as commanding officer. Signed, D.P. Quinn, Rear Admiral, United States Navy, Commander, Navy Personnel Command. Admiral Greenert, USS John Warner is in commission, and I am in command. Very well, Captain. Carry on. Carry on, sir. Executive Officer, set the watch. Aye, aye, sir. Off to the deck, set the first watch. Aye, sir. The officer of the deck is the commanding officer's direct representative and while on watch is responsible for the safety and smooth operation of the ship. The long glass is a traditional symbol of an officer of the deck's authority in a ship of the line. To assist in this tradition, former Chief of Naval Operations Admiral Carlisle Trost will assist in setting the first watch by passing the long glass to our first officer of the deck, Lieutenant Brad Blanchett, United States Navy. Also on the watch team is machinist mate first class Jared Falk, Machinist Mate Second Class Robbie Lowry and Boatsman's Mate First Class Aaron Wilson. Set the watch. On deck, Section 1. Sir, the watch is set. Very well. About. Face. Captain, the watch is set. Very well. 
We are delighted to have our sponsor, Mrs. Jeannie Warner, with us today. Jeannie christened John Warner on September 6, 2014. Jeannie, I would be honored if you would join me and give the order to man our ship and bring her to life. This is exciting. Officers and crew of the USS John Warner, man our ship and bring her to life. proud to serve in your great Navy. Ready? Two. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. Captain, the ship is manned and ready. Very well. Admiral Connor, USS John Warner reports for duty. Admiral Greener, request permission to break your flag. Break my flag, Captain. Break your flag, guys, sir. Exoc Executive Officer, break the flag of the Chief of Naval Operations. Aye, sir. Quartermaster, break the flag of the Chief of Naval Operations. Aye, aye, sir. <laughs> Captain, the flag of Ch the Chief of Naval Operations is flying over USS John Warner. Very well. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated. I'd like to introduce Commander Dan Caldwell, United States Navy, Commanding Officer, USS John Warner. Thank you. John Warner. Parade, rest. Good morning. Governor McAuliffe, Senator and Mrs. Warner, Senators and Congressmen, Admiral Greenert, Admiral Richardson, Flag Officers, distinguished guests, family, and all friends of John Warner, we are very honored to have you with us today. It is often said that submarining is a team sport, and if that is true, then building a new submarine is the ultimate team sport and we have had some all-star teammates over the past three years. First, I need to recognize all of the hard work that Mary Ellen Baldwin and the Hampton Roads Navy League has put forth to get us where we are today. They have been with us. <laughs> they, have, 
They have been with us from the beginning and along with Admiral Beers and the commissioning committee have been critical in making this commissioning ceremony possible. One of the most important partnerships that we've had is with Newport News Shipbuilding. I've been impressed with the skill, dedication, and professionalism of the thousands of men and women that I've had the pleasure to interact with during the course of this tour. The unofficial motto of the Virginia class program at Newport News Shipbuilding is that we need to cross the finish line together, meaning that the ship and the crew need to both be ready before the ship can go to sea. Amid all the welding, grinding, brazing, and wiring, Bob Bolden and the delivery team made good on their, their promise to ensure that the crew was given the time and the resources to be ready for every milestone. Mr. Mulherron, you have a first-class organization, and it has been a pleasure to work with the dedicated professionals at Newport News Shipbuilding. <laughs> Captain Lemon, Commander Kim, and Rob Adams, and the rest of the experts at Supervisor of Shipbuilding have leveraged their corporate knowledge and expertise to ensure that we had everything that we needed to be successful. Your assistance has been much appreciated. Preparing the crew to take this ship for the first, uh, to see for the first time was a monumental task, and we had plenty of help from some of the most experienced team, uh, most experienced people in the Navy. Commodore Snodgrass and the Squadron 6 staff, along with Captain Gravar and his team, provided the mentorship and corporate knowledge that we needed. You set the bar high, and we are a much better crew because of your assistance. Senator Warner, the stories that you have told and the time that you have invested in the crew have helped them see past the day-to-day -day trials and tribulations of making a submarine ready to go to sea and has allowed them to focus on the importance of the work that they do. Your lifelong record of dedication to a cause bigger than yourself has been an inspiration to the crew and has given all of us something for which to strive. Thank you. Jeannie, the crew of John Warner could not have asked for a better sponsor. You have infused your spirit into this magnificent submarine and have blessed us with your grace and charm. I've enjoyed working with you for the last several years and I'm looking forward to your continued sponsorship and I know the crew does as well. If your husband is a member of the John Warner crew, please stand. <laughs> While the crew is hard at work, business continues at home. And it is your efforts that have allowed us to do the job that we do. Through long days and nights that we may come home late or not at all due to last minute schedule changes, you still, still took care of the business that counts. Thank you. Over the past three years, I have watched as this submarine went from submarine parts to modules and finally to this amazing warship that you see behind me today. The technology is truly amazing, but at the end of the day, it is the crew that brings the ship to life. Their training and skills are the decisive difference between victory and defeat. As the submarine was coming together, I also watched a group of men grow into a cohesive team of undersea warriors. To the crew, I say this. Much has been asked of you over the last several years, and you have never let me down. Long days, shift work, and frequent schedule changes have been the norm. You were asked to prepare for countless milestones and inspections in less time than any other Virginia-class submarine to date, and you never faltered. You delivered first-time success every time, including earning the highest score ever for readiness in the history of the submarine, of Virginia-class submarine program. You have demonstrated resilience and agility that is second to none. And most importantly, you supported your shipmates and you succeeded with honesty and integrity. I could, have, could not have asked for a better crew. I am honored and humbled to call you shipmates. In years to come, USS John Warner will perform missions vital to national security and will play a large role in the defense of our nation. She will show the nation's flags in ports around the world. 
Her crew will be ambassadors for the United States, demonstrating our core principles of honor, courage, and commitment to people all, all over the globe. John Warner has had a great beginning, and I am certain an even brighter future. May God bless USS John Warner, the Navy, and the United States of America. Thank you. Ship's Company, attend Hut. Will the guests please rise? Chaplain Cathcart will deliver the benediction. As we close today, I would invite you to join me in prayer. Let us pray. Almighty God, those of us who have had the great honor to witness this very special ceremony in the next generation of submarine warfare are reminded that we serve within the greatest of submarine communities, within the greatest of navies, within the greatest of nations. And it's only because of brave men and women of unwavering commitment, integrity, and honor, such as the great American whose name we honor today, Senator John Warner. And Father God, as we close, we ask that he take with him the absolute certainty in knowing that his days spent in service to this nation and the people in it was of value beyond measure and beyond what words can convey. And finally, we as family and friends of Submarine Forces Atlantic and as Americans ask that your care and protection be with this warrior, his family, and every submariner who wears the cloth of the nation. Wherever they go, in service to our country and all they do, the known and the unknown, now and forevermore, we pray. Amen. Thank you, Chaplain Cathcart. Ladies and gentlemen, please be seated and remain seated until our platform guests have departed. Ladies and gentlemen, the USS John Morris Commissioning Committee invites you to a post-commissioning reception under the large tent on the pier. This concludes our ceremony. Thank you for the support of our boat, our crew, our Navy, and our nation. Tours of the ship will be available starting in 30 minutes after the conclusion of the ceremony. Thank you. John Warner, dismissed.